Hello, family, and welcome back to the Explore the Extraordinary podcast. My name is Betty, and today I'm joined by two friends. I have Alexis and Sarah with me today, and they have a Facebook Live that they do every week called Midweek Magic. They talk about all things conscious creation, all things manifestation. Sarah is a medicine woman, and Alexis is an imagination coach. She happens to be my personal coach, so I'm very grateful for that connection. And uh, I'm super excited to introduce them to our community at IONS. Thank you guys so much for your willingness to serve. And I'm going to toss it right over to you. Oh, thank you so much. This is such an honor, you guys, because IONS has been such a huge part of my journey. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit of Sarah and I's background. Um, we started a Facebook Live back in 20, I want to say 2022 now, Sarah. Is that right? We're in. Yeah, yeah it's been about that. Yeah. Two and a half years, something like that. Yes. Yeah, it's gone really quickly and uh, magically, as we like to say. Um, so in 2022, I was really um, honing in on some information I had discovered through Wayne Dyer. Um, it was Neville Goddard's work called The Law of Assumption. Um, the Law of Assumption is just a little bit different for, for me in that versus the Law of Attraction, because it's all around the idea of assuming your life in a new way, looking at your self-concept and your day-to-day -day stories that you're telling yourself and assuming a new one, basically. So I began this work, um, you know, around my own personal life, obviously, and it led to seeing Sarah on Facebook one day and really connecting and resonating with some of the information that she was sharing with her community. Um, we both have been, um, in our own way, in our own journeys, um, you know, feeling the call to raise our, our consciousness into a different field. And we both were very big on holistic medicine, um, our spiritual journeys and expansion of that. And I really felt called to know this woman. Like there was something about Sarah that spoke to me. It spoke to my heart. She, she had this energy about her. So I use the law of assumption in speaking forth and proclaiming forth that I was going to know this person. I was going to be friends with her. We were going to have this journey together and share somehow in um, the expansion, you know, as friends. And so lo and behold, we connected very shortly after she answered, I believe, I did I send you a message, Sarah? I believe I you did. Like, you did introducing saying, you know, I I feel um I feel you, sis. Basically, I feel yeah. what you're talking about. I I resonate deeply. Um, and she was at the time really diving deep into healing the body holistically and naturally, which I've always been fascinated by. Um, so we connected, we started a podcast or a, a live, whatever you'd like to call it, on uh, Facebook every week where we we just share very raw, real, you know, experiences together um, with each other and with our community, which has grown, um, thankfully, over the last couple of years. And it's led to some amazing transformations, not only for us, but for the people who tune in and feel led and feel um, the same resonance. So around the time, I think a year in to our experience together, um, I was sharing more and more about the law of assumption and Neville's work and revision, which is all around the idea of, you know, taking an old experience in our life. Um, maybe it's not the best childhood that you've had, or it's a marriage that's fallen into disrepair or whatever it may be. And Neville spoke on revision being a, a tool that we can take and change the story. So I shared that with Sarah one day, and I remember both of us starting to feel drawn to doing this in our day-to-day -day in a very intentional way. So that led to Sarah and I kind of shifting gears and sharing a lot of um, our tools with, with people who wanted to manifest a better storyline to, you know, for themselves. And it's been such a beautiful journey together. I feel like She's my sister. <laughs> and um, we also manifested an incredible, you know, time together physically. We we are not in the same state. She's in Louisiana and I'm in North Carolina. So last year we had kind of a mastermind where we intentionally set um, a scene for 
coming together, meeting in person, seeing one another, and that came to fruition, which was also very beautiful. Um, I want to let Sarah speak a little bit about what her journey was like during that time and how it's, because it's transformed both of our lives, right, Sarah? It has absolutely transformed both of our lives. Um, yeah, so like Alexis said, uh, she reached out to me one day. She said, I recognize that accent on your on your um, videos. And I, too, am from New Orleans. Well, I'm, I'm from um, about two hours from New Orleans. And she recognized the Louisiana accent. And we just had so much in common, just hit it off. At that time, uh, my husband and I were actually um, speaking about putting a podcast or something similar to that together. And so it was already in my imagination. I wasn't even aware of, of the what I was actually doing. <laughs> but what I was doing was manifesting a beautiful soul to cross paths cross paths with me. And uh, we did so. The message came. We clicked immediately. And I threw out my idea because she said, I, I feel as though we're going to work together in some sort of way. And I said, well, here's my idea. And immediately we just um, it, it was just it was like magic. And so that's what it's grown to be uh, for us. Um, from, we went from a wellness Wednesday because we really didn't know um, how it was going to form and what we were going to talk about. We just knew that we had so much to talk about and we connected so deeply and we both have um, the journeys that we've been on to share with people and wanting to just uh, be authentic and real and open and just let people know what uh, what we have experienced and then what we began to experience together. And so we we began that and, um, you know, it started off really slowly as it was gaining momentum. And then Alexis, um, just like she said, she mentioned to me about the work of Neville Goddard. And I, at that time, I was really exploring um, Abraham Hicks and all of the law of attraction information. And there was just a little piece that was missing because I, I recognized that although the vibrate, I needed to find this vibration and there were all of these thoughts that kept going on in my mind. And I thought, how am I going to attract this vibration? All of this in my vortex, as Abraham says, and, um, when when she introduced Neville, I thought, wow, I could just stop telling that story and rewrite it in a different way. Wouldn't that be amazing? And I had um, I had all these great visions for myself and the way I wanted to create my life and and how I wanted things to look. And I knew that there was a deep calling inside of myself to be a medicine woman and to provide these uh, plant medicines to people being on this holistic path. And so she she really began just saying, you know, there's these little practices that we can try and, you know, just just give this a shot. And we began really small with just imagine imagining things as like a ball or, or a ladder. And um, I remember um, having this experience where I said, OK, I'm going to I'm going to deeply envision um, this magical experience with my husband and this meetup. And um, it was totally random and just great for my imagination. And I remember coming back, not but a week later and saying, oh my goodness, <laughs> you, you, won't, you won't even believe it. And that's really where it came from. And we just, so we made a transition from Wellness Wednesday to let's start sharing this magic. Let's start sharing with other people because things just started to unfold themselves in such a beautiful way that now we're 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 coming together. Now we're we're sharing with other people. Other people are having great experiences with this. And um, yeah, so meeting up with her was something that we definitely came together. We envisioned it. We it, it was absolutely beautiful. And it was such a a greater experience than what I had envisioned. So I knew that it was definitely meant to be. And um, here we are just sharing every week with um, with just lovely people who have maybe been caught up in an old pattern of thinking. And if we just switch 
one thought to something that just feels better. It just needs to feel a little better. And then once you get to that place, it's like, oh, imagine that. <laughs> imagine that. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I love that. I, I want to ask a couple of questions that came up for me while you guys were talking. I love your journey to finding each other. I love the tools that you are allowing other people to have access to by being these spiritual teachers. I'm wondering if maybe you guys could share a little bit about your spiritual journey, how you got to this point where, you know, you want to be of service to the, to the collective. Uh, I'm sure you guys have, I mean, I know you guys have <laughs> intense spiritual stories. If you want to just give us uh, our audience a little clip of that. Sure. Um, is it okay if I start at Sarah? Sure. Okay. So um, my journey began at 16. I had a very mystical experience uh, growing up in New Orleans in a broken home, as most of us did in the 80s <laughs> um, and nowadays, too, in the modern times. But um, I was abruptly awakened at 16, very um, aggressively uh, by a very loud voice, an audible voice that woke me at 16. And it said, it's time to go very sternly to me. So that, that particular experience shook my whole, like my whole body, my whole spirit woke up that day. Before that, I was just a wandering teenager through the streets of NOLA with no real, you know, guidance system. My mom was doing her best to, you know, kind of provide for us. And I was just going through the motions of teenagehood. But when that voice came, I knew intuitively that that was telling me it was time to leave the city to go live with my father. I just had this this knowing because no one was around. It was it was literally out of nowhere. It it pulled me right out of bed, out almost out of my body, kind of a feeling. And that that set me on a journey from 16 until I was 29 of celibacy and spiritual seeking. Um, my dad was a little bit of um, an eclectic spiritual guide himself. He studied mainly the scripture, but in terms of like um, the Old Testament type of mentality of the Le Levitical laws. And I was following all of the very strict, you know, Levitical um, food laws, like the dietary laws. Um, I was fasting and praying on a regular basis. I mean, we we used to do 40 day fasts together it was an intense experience and from to be brought out of your like a regular life to monastic living for that long of a period i think that was 15 years worth um it it changed something in me i mean it shifted my focus to who am i and what am i doing here and what's my purpose and then i went through a marriage and and experiencing a little bit of normalcy for a few years but something led me to read a book by Betty Eady, um, Embraced by the Light, back in 2012. And that book shifted my life um, into a different gear. Um, it began my my obsession with NDEs. It began a journey of um, metaphysics and opening up my heart chakra finally for the first time and thinking for myself, stepping into my own power. Um, not that I didn't have you know, a lot to go through even still, because I had a divorce come up. I had a very dark period in my life where I went into, you know, addiction and um, some very selfish living for a while. But overall, I've always been a seeker and I've always felt called to expand, called to speak on things of the deep, like the deeper levels with people. So I wanted to, to connect at the heart level always in relationships, which kept me, you know, very much a loner for a lot of my life because most of the people that I was encountering were not really open to that or receptive to that sort of journey. They were really just interested in the day-to-day, -day, um, you know, what do you call it? Like um, material type life. And for me, it was always meaningful to have a deeper connection or conversation. So the NDE really started off um, my journey with metaphysics, and it led to a lot of incredible um, awakenings within me and relationship changes. Um, it led to my divorce. It showed me that there wasn't alignment there. And so, yeah, it's been definitely, a you know, several chapters in the life so far, but 
always with a heart for expansion, growth, knowledge, Gnosticism, um, esoteric type of information. And so, yeah, a lot of the people that I was following and really resonating with in the metaphysical world led me to Neville's work because they were all sort of repeating what he was speaking of and they would mention him and I didn't even catch it until years in. So yeah, it was kind of all, all, all a culmination of that work through those, you know, those 15 years or so. How about you, Miss Sarah? Yes. So um, my journey got started. I was very, a very curious child and I felt, always felt um, a disconnect. I felt that the, the world uh, that I was living in, my, my family environment, that there was just some, I always felt just a disconnect. And um, that led me to um, uh, childhood, teens, early 20s of the wrong, you know, and, and I don't even want to say the wrong path because it led me here, but a path of, um, you know, I, I was, I was, I was not very kind to myself. I, um, I struggled with addiction for many years and always searching for something that I knew was inside of myself, but I could not see on the outside. So there were years and years of just going through the motions of numbing myself so that I could just get through it. And um, I met a beautiful man at some point um, and um, he had... Um, he had custody of his children and he had gotten himself sober and he had gone through all of this beautiful life-changing experience. And there was something that he had that I wanted. And I thought, well, this is something that I had never seen before because I had either been um, in, in my addiction, people either enabled me or they went um, or, or they totally abandoned me, if you will. And so this was the first time that I had ever seen anybody say, if if this is something that you would like, I would like to walk this path with you. And um, so I got myself into the rehab and I started doing that work. And I recognized really early on that, wow, there there is, it's not, it's, it's, it's not a disconnect that I, I'm seeing all this disconnect outside of me, but I was really just disconnected with my own self and what I wanted and who I truly was and all of this. So all of that started to come to me and I recognized like, I can actually set some goals and accomplish them. Look at what I've done and um, build the relationship back with my family and um, my children and all of this beautiful magic just started to unfold in my life. And then I thought, well, if I can say, if I can make this decision to, and this was so life changing to just make the decision, because I had gone through the steps of the rehabs before, but I was doing it for other people. I was doing it for uh, court systems or what have you, but I had never truly done it for myself. And doing it for myself, I recognized that I had this deep power with inside of myself to decide that I was going to do something and move forward toward that. And that all of this beauty started coming after that moment. And and quickly there, I got on the, I, I went to, back to school. I wasn't sure what I was going to do on this path. And I thought maybe I wanted to work in a rehab because that was the only thing at that point that I had accomplished. And I thought I could definitely give back in that way. And um, really soon into the program, I recognized that there was another disconnect there that I was not comfortable with prescribing medications because that's what we had just gotten off of. So I could not see myself um, suggesting to other people that there were that they should take pills in place of other pills. And and so that's what led me to the uh, holistic path. And I decided that um, at that point I had watched my 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 mother. She had transitioned in 2015 and I had watched all of her health issues and and everything. I, I felt that um, her maybe her ignorance with the system and and just their the way that they they 
You know, they handle things in the in the Western uh, medicine world that there was a there was another way. I just knew there was another way. And so I went on my search there and I just started connecting with nature and the plants and what um, recognizing that God put everything there for us for this healing. And what would that look like if we could really heal the world with with everything is there available for us? And um, I started down with herbalism and um, started a business and that was going really well. And um, here I am today. Um, I've now, um, I had a deep, a really deep calling to serve and facilitate plant medicines. Um, Cambo being one of those, it's, it's a, it's, it's from a frog, but it's, it's not necessarily a plant, but it is from nature and all of this great healing that comes from everything that is provided for us. So uh, that's, that's really where all of that started and clearing out the mind, clearing out the old things, uh, putting, uh, when I fell discord in one area, I would just put a plan in there. I just started working in with nature and meditation and grounding and doing this, this deep soul searching of what it is that I was put here to do, what my calling, my true calling was. And, um, yeah, it, it, uh, here I am. <laughs> here we are. Love yeah. it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for sharing pieces of your journey with me. I'm wondering that you guys have such a tenacity for what you do. You both feel, I can feel your passion for where you've been called, you know, like uh, Alexis with the law of assumption and Sarah with the plant medicine. And I'm, I'm curious if, if you were to meet somebody, because I'm sure there's lots of people that are watching, that was kind of in the beginning of their journey, is there something that you could tell them about, you know, you guys are talking about two different routes, although they are in some way connected, because you guys are connected. What kind of advice would you give to people who are in the beginning of their journey and looking for answers? Mm, that's a good one. Thanks for that question. Um, Honestly, I, I actually do this with a lot of clients. I st There's some people I work with that have never really questioned their spirituality or their journey whatsoever. And I always bring it back to the beginning step has to start with just being aware, the awareness, you know, of self and what, what sort of mechanisms are going on in our minds and in our hearts on a daily basis. So I have my clients ask the questions initially in homework sort of um, form. What's the five dominant things that are coming up for you on a daily basis? What are the thoughts and the processes that come up in your, your, just your, your day to day and write those down. I think when we start questioning um, okay, what am I talking about? What are the stories I'm I'm speaking on? What are the um, feelings that are coming up on a consistent basis? Do I feel restricted or do I feel like I'm in a flow? That sort of thing. People begin to to really hone in on, okay, well, I'm finding that this particular area of my life keeps coming up. Um, I said I posted this on Facebook the other day that out of the out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth will speak. That's that's in the scripture. That's from Matthew. What we're talking about is what is on our hearts all the time. So when people start questioning those things and really sitting with them in, in of the present moment, they begin to say to themselves, oh, wait a minute, you know, I am I am kind of going through this this pattern, this habit of thought, this habit of um experience that that really is not serving me. So it starts with questioning. It starts, you know, with becoming present and being the watchman. I say the watchman at the door of your mind. You have to, you have to begin to actually be conscious of what you're doing. And because thoughts are not who we are, but a lot of times we're identifying so closely with them, they become a routine and it becomes your personal reality, like Joe Dispenza talks about. And so you have to start with there. You have to start with awareness questioning those things and then getting really present in your, in your heart with that, then that will lead to other things. You'll start, you know, 
being more mindful of, okay, well, I need to shift these thoughts into a, a, a different gear. You know, we're, we're frequency beings, we're energy beings. So most people are residing in an energy field that's very low level because we're, we're observing what's outside of ourselves all the time. We don't go inward. We don't do the inside job. When we go inward and when we question these things and we stop observing just what's happening all the time and we start actually caring about what's going on within, there's something that just magically starts to take place. You start feeling more peace in your life. You start feeling more, you know, contentment with very small things, you, you know, it doesn't have to be big events anymore that gives you a lot of satisfaction. It's the small moments and, you know, dinner with your family, time with your pets, you know, just doing dishes and being able to like think intentionally and, and sit with self. These are like meditations almost. They become like meditations for our lives because you're no longer on a hamster wheel of thought. You just become the experiencer. You become the observer. So that's my, my recommendation. How about you, Sarah? Yeah. So, so my, my recommendation would to be to, while we're talking about being mindful, um, being mindful of what we're, what we're watching, what we're listening to, um, where it is that our energy is going. And that is going to circle back to also, what are we putting inside of our bodies and are we mindful uh, at those moments of like, what are we putting in and and what is the energy and the vibration of the things that we are putting into our bodies? And what are we hoping to achieve by putting those things inside? So in, in my experience, I learned a lot through fasting, whereas I would, in fasting or just taking a moment to recognize that a lot of the things that we're doing, it's just on an old program. We're doing it habitually. And um, so to to stop and to be mindful of, okay, so I'm going to make a conscious decision today just to look at what the things are that I'm putting in my body, in my mind, in my thought process. What am I putting in? What am I allowing in? And what is the energy and vibration of those things? And then we, once we begin to be mindful of it, even if you wanted to jot that down, like, so I put this, 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 and then you kind of question, what is the, what would be the vibration of, you know, a, a dead food compared to a living food? And what would I, how could I achieve something greater if I were to put an electrical um, food inside of my body? So clearing those old, um, you know, and then as time goes on, we're we're clearing things out. So it may be just one meal that you're being conscious about. And also, too, I do recommend that everything that you are you are sitting with and putting going to put in your body that you you give it some of your own energy. You transform that energy and you sit with that and you say, thank you so much for healing my body and nourishing my my soul and um, give my body all the nourishment that it needs so that I can clear out all of the old stuff because the gut can, is sometimes looked at as the second brain and what are all these chemicals that I'm putting inside and how is that affecting my thought process and my patterns because we know that chemicals can do these things to the brain and um so in doing so just blessing that food and and giving that food some some good energy and then uh, through the process being more mindful of what i'm putting in and how do i feel do i want to feel high vibrational and how do i you know how do i i see my reflection in the mirror and if this is my temple and i'm supposed to be loving myself in its entirety i need to be mindful of um of those things. So that definitely I would, um, I, yeah, I would recommend just, just starting there being, being mindful of what you're putting in, what is the vibration of that? And if we can switch it just a little bit and see how that feels. And if that feels really good, then see how some, you know, see how, how that would feel and, and just going from there. 
Oh, very Love good. Love that. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. It sounds really simple when you guys are saying it, but I know that it comes up against so much resistance in our collective and, and my, myself included, but I really needed to hear that. So I feel like that was a message just for me. Maybe it will resonate with somebody else who's listening too. <laughs> So um, shifting gears a little bit, I kind of want to hear about some of your success stories with um, whether you guys want to talk about maybe how the law of assumption has played out in your life, like allowing something totally amazing into your experience, some cool synchronicity story, or maybe some success that you've had with a client in the teachings that you guys both have. I'm going to give you some space to share about that. Oh, very good. This is exciting. So, yeah, I think we've we've both had some incredible um, manifestations that were very intentional. Me, I, I say my mo. I think my most profound one was my partner. Um, back in 2021, I, I, I started with you know Neville back in like 2020 when the lockdown was going on. I really got into it with small tests. So I, I really believe it's it's important that when you're taking in any new information that begins to resonate that you you question it that you you test it out you make sure that it's you know it's something that actually works for me it started with the small ball test and then it led to some other little small things with my my family my kids but i wanted to go bigger and when i came back to north carolina in 2021 i i really desired to have an in, like an aligned partner someone who um would love me and the kids take on this new family of ours and be um, interested in spiritual growth, interested in me as the depths of who I was, not just the, you know, the surface. So I went to bed every night. Neville talked about right before bed being a very powerful time that we can use for manifestation called the state akin to sleep. So we called it sats. And I would go to sleep in the feeling of having a partner next to me, I would feel like I was pretending like I was an actress, that I had this amazing guy and he had um, a big heart, a, a zest for spiritual growth and expansion, someone who was like doing well in his life and was happy and content with him, his own journey. It wasn't going to be like a codependent sort of situation, which I have experienced. Um, I felt all of the things around the relationship, but I didn't hone in on like physical specifics or anything like that. I just went for the feeling. I went kind of general actually. And um, I had a childhood friend named Aaron back when I lived in New Orleans. We lived two blocks from each other. And we we had a good year and a half of like relationship during your childhood. That's like a lifetime. It felt like I had known him, you know, forever. But we only had really about a year to a year and a half of very close ties back then. And I never forgot that. I met this young man when I'm like 14, 13, and he made such an impression on me that I had never forgotten him over the years, but we had lost touch. We hadn't really stayed in each other's lives and we had both been married and divorced and he had been married again. And out of the blue one night, after I did this, this um, test of the you know, sitting in the feeling. And it was just really for fun. It wasn't like I was putting it on a pedestal or making it important, which I think is key when you're trying, when you're attempting to bring something into your, your now moment, we have to have fun with it. We have to keep it light. We have to keep everything on an even playing field, which I, I think I did really well at. And all of a sudden one night I get on this random app, I'll never forget. And it was um kind of late. And he comes on to the app and he said, Hey stranger, how have you been? And I was like, Aaron. And this is 30 years after we knew one another. And he said, do you know how to use this app? And I said, no, do you, I've never been on here either. And so we're both on here same night beginning, you know, beginning our journey on this random app. And it led to us reuniting it led to us falling in love. It led to the feeling of that wish fulfilled. And it has been absolutely incredible. We've manifested a lot together um, as well because he started resonating with the information as you know, we as we spoke about it over the last couple of years. And we got married last year. So 
to me, that's like my biggest, you know, accomplishment because it was such an important thing to have a great partner in my life. So what's, what would be yours, Miss Sarah? Um, there's quite a few. I know. But I like, yeah. So I would like to talk mm -hmm. about, um, I have a really special client and the transformation that has happened with this client has been life-changing for not only her, but for myself in watching it, in watching the, the journey unfold. And it really started with, um, she began watching us on our lives. And so she was watching um, about a year. And so she was very familiar with the information that we were talking about, and it all resonated with her really deeply. And one day she reached out to me and she said, so I think that I would be ready to sit in your chair. And so I offer up a chair for integration for people who are going through, um, if they're, if, if they're going through the plant medicine um, journey or wh wherever it is that they are, they are able to just stop, sit in the chair and begin to process their thoughts and just look at them. So something similar to what Alexis said, just kind of looking at the thoughts and looking at the words. And so she, um, she sat in the chair that day and she began to, talk about, uh, you know, so what's on your mind? And she began to tell a story. And um, after that story, after um, I pointed out a few words to her in that story, she, it, I saw in her the click. It happened, it, it happened just like that. She said, every other story I'm gonna tell you, you're also gonna circle that back to me, right? And I said, yes. And she was like, oh, man. She said, all the stories that I brought to share with you in this chair, they're all, they're all mine. I'm carrying them all on my own. You mean to tell me that all of this baggage that I brought with me here today, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything? And um, I said, that's right. And she said, okay, I, I got it. And uh, we left that day and I, I just saw that light walk away. And I knew that right there, then and there that she had gotten it. And um, we started working together with the uh, plant medicine and um, also with all of this work with Neville. And so now we're retraining the mind. We're doing all of these things and uh, also working with the plant medicine, helping to ground and center so that when the mind would drift off, she was able to bring herself back. And um, the most um, she in, in a matter of three days, she was ready to um, get off all of the prescription medication that she was on. And in three weeks time, she had weaned herself off and gone through the withdrawal process with the help of the plant medicine as well and with the thoughts. So she's now looking at herself on these days and she is just lifting herself up and she's just speaking all of these beautiful things over herself, knowing in that moment that she had the power to achieve anything that she wanted to. She could be anything she wanted to be. And... um. That is what, so it, I've been working with her for about a year and everything about this person has completely transformed. The relationships with her parents, all of that baggage that she brought with her that day, all of those people that she had in there with all of those stories, it no longer exists. It's not there. And um, she now has a, like I said, beautiful relationship with her family. She's, she's, doing great in her business. She's definitely riding high on this all flying, high flying disc. And um, that is, and in the process, I gained a beautiful friend, this, this deep connection and this beautiful friendship that I was also too longing for because through my journey, I, I really didn't have many deep connections with the feminine energy there was there was something in there that was that was blocking me and through this process um and relationship with alexis and and all of this how it's just grown and transformed i'm able to now have deep connection relationships with such amazing people and they begin to, they show themselves 
uh, to me every day. And it's it's a reflection. We are all reflections of one another. So in hearing her in hearing her stories and what she was going through, I was able to see in myself where there may be some little tweaks that I also needed to work on and and, and shift inside of myself. And um, it's it's been it's been remarkable. So thank you. Thank wow, you for that. Those there. stories totally lifted me up. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, you know what I heard out of what you were saying was find your tribe. You know, I, that really, that's really what I hear. Find your people, find people that are going to lift you up and activate you and assist you on your healing, your spiritual journey, your evolution, all of that. So I'm just going to do a little quick shameless plug because at IONS, we have sharing groups online. So if you're somebody who's watching and you feel like you don't have, you haven't found your people, come check out our sharing groups. The link is going to be in the liner notes of this episode and, and see if you resonate with the information. There's also going to be links in the liner notes of this episode for Alexis and Sarah, how to connect with them, how to watch their midweek magic. And um, I just want to thank you guys so much for your willingness to come on and serve our community. Is there anything else that you'd like to share to feel more complete about our time together? Hmm. I just want to, yeah, I just want to say thank you. I'm in gratitude for the sharing space with you, Betty. You have shifted something in me. I've I've known you now for a good year, and that's been a, a big connection for me in my life. I'm I'm grateful to Ions. I'm grateful to Sarah for the the beautiful journey that we've shared uh, over these last couple of years. And thank you guys just for being open to hearing our stories. And yeah, we, we look forward to um, being here again and connecting some, some way down the line, you know. I'm definitely grateful for the connection. Uh, Betty, your story, um, there, there were such gems in there that I took with me along the way. And, and I do find myself circling back sometimes and saying, you know what? I chose to be here right yeah. now in this very moment. I chose to be here. And um, I'm so grateful for that. And I chose to be here with you guys. And I chose to connect with Alexis. And it's, it's all just... Um, a beautiful connection. I'm I'm so grateful and and honored to sit with my dearest sister and Betty and um, all of you guys. Thank you guys for letting me share. Thanks so much. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.